John, can you tell us what you think are some of the most impressive uh, science and research to come out of the Compact Array? The Compact Array has been pumping out world-class research papers for like decades, so it's hard to kind of narrow it down to a, a small list. But a couple that spring to my mind, one is that uh, this telescope was able to track the uh, re-emergence of supernova 1987A, which was the first naked eye supernova in 400 years, for people who remember it, back in 1987. Sure. You could actually step outside and see it. Wow. And no one has been able to do that, had been able to do that for 400 years. So this was a unique event. Um, and it was very important to uh, get every piece of information we could from it. So the Compact Array has spent a lot of time over the years following the evolution of that yep. source as it uh, first of all produced a very bright flash, faded, and then started coming back as a radio source. So that's one. It's had an instrumental role in following up gravitational bursts. So one of the most exciting things in physics was the detection of gravity waves a couple of years ago in, uh, with LIGO. And this telescope has been very important in following up LIGO bursts. So uh, there's a coordinated arrangement where uh, radio observations can be made very quickly after the grav wave event is detected. And that's been uh, really important research as well to get multiple windows on these important you know, grab wave events and find out where they're coming from and every last piece of information that we can get about them because it's just fascinating physics. Yeah, it's definitely fascinating. It tells us a lot about the physics of uh, what's creating these gravitational waves, but it's also a really big testament to the telescopes. I know that these events are really time sensitive events. Uh, you kind of have to get your telescopes pointing at it as soon as you can. So it's yeah, well, fantastic. One of the great strengths of the compact array in the way that we've uh, learned how to operate it is to respond very quickly to these uh, time critical events. Yeah. So we have actually have an automated system where certain observers who've signed up in advance can take control of the antenna automatically now for a high priority event and uh, go straight to it without having to go through any paperwork. Yeah. So that's a pretty unique thing yeah. uh, in national facilities around the world. So. Yeah, very impressive. And obviously we're seeing uh, that efficiency uh, result in these really high impact research papers and, and our understanding in general. Yeah, a lot of uh, emphasis, there's been much more emphasis in um, recent years on the ability to respond quickly to these transients, particularly gravity wave yeah. transients and fast radio bursts as well. So we saw at the Parks Observatory that it actually has a whole other name, uh, a Wiradjuri name, Marian. I want to know, do these dishes at Akkar, do they have names? They don't yet. They've still got fairly prosaic names, Antenna 1, 2, <laughs> up to 6. But it's certainly uh, something we're looking at to find, uh, I guess, the big Camilroy Indigenous names for them. I, th I think it was a great uh, idea to do that for Parks with Marianne, and it's kind of caught on. You know, acknowledge the contributions that the earliest, probably the earliest astronomers ever uh, have made. In fact, it uh, comes really from the West where we named all 36 of our ASCAP antennas with Indigenous names. That was an idea that came out of the negotiation for the land use agreement sure. with the Wadjuri Yamaji people there. Yep. And we decided that was such a good idea, we, sh we should export it to parks. So we've done that. Next thing will be uh, names here, yeah. but it hasn't happened yet. That's awesome. I think it's such a, a great way to include the Indigenous community here um, at the sites of the, the observatories. And, you know, I think we're really proud, you know, our communities are really proud of, you know, our old people, our ancestors, and all of the amazing observations, including, you know, observations of the skies that, uh, you know, have been have been included in our, our stories and our culture for, for so long. And I think it just really makes us um, feel more a part of that today, you know, when we are being uh, acknowledged and included and, and celebrated by the, the broader astronomy community. So, yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's awesome. And I can't wait to hear the names of these dishes. You'll be the first to know. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs>